right. Well, um, both of you, first of all, thank you so much for uh, finding the time to chat with me on behalf of Backstage today. Such a treat. And Sasha, I know we have your cover story uh, hitting Backstage and newsstands next week. So that's exciting. This video and the cover will be- No, I only want to do things for Backstage from now on. Yeah, that, that's fine by me. <laughs> and uh, you know where Get to find- the other me. outlets. Yeah. Get the other outlets. <laughs> there we go, there we go. Um, but uh, congrats on this film. Congrats on the response to it over these last few months. Uh, Maria and I were just kind of chatting about the way that the world has responded to it. It's the second most streamed uh, film, VOD film of 2020. Um, oh, wow. Just how do, you, how do you guys feel about that? How do you feel about so many people kind of connecting with it, resonating with it now in the hindsight of 2020 and under a new presidency? Um, I mean, I feel very good about that. Um, we made the movie for it to be released prior to the election to, you know, make people laugh, but fundamentally to encourage people to vote for Biden or to not vote for Donald Trump. And, you know, it's an emotional story. It's a comedy. It's a satire. But fundamentally, it's a reminder of everything that was wrong with Trump and Trumpism in 90 minutes. Um, so, yes, the aim was to get it out to as many voters in America as possible. Um, and that was going to be really, we had an incredibly tight uh, editing schedule as, as a result. In the end, we actually were, we were making two different movies. One was going to be basically not quite finished that we would release to the rest of the world and one that was going to be completely finished that we'd give to America. Mm -hmm. Because again, it, the movie was for the election. That's why, you know, Maria, myself, all the crew, Jason, the director, we were, we were kind of on a, <laughs> on a mission to get it out. So I'm really happy that people have seen it and really happy that people enjoyed it for the most part. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're chatting today, the day after the inauguration of President Joe Biden and VP Kamala Harris. That feels so good to say. Um, but d does it feel like w w whether or not Borat had a, a direct hand in leading people to the polls? Obviously, you made this film with the intent of spreading that message, with getting people out there. Um, does it feel like it, it had the power to change minds? Does it feel like uh, mission accomplished now that we're on the other side of it? Um, listen, it is mission accomplished. How much of a role or any did we play in it? I would say, firstly, we infiltrated the inner circle of the president, mm -hmm. the, the ex-president. First time I've been able to say that for a while. <laughs> uh, Maria was around Donald Trump and his son. She was brought into the White House when Donald Trump was there a week before the coronavirus outbreak. By the way, they didn't even check her to see if she had a test. She was brought in there by the lead Washington correspondent of One American News, which was one of the networks that was pushing Trump's big lie about a stolen election. So we had infiltrated that inner circle of the president. I think that in itself is a reminder to the audience of the incompetency and the disregard for expertise of the presidency. He had got rid of anyone who would probably would have been able to prevent us from getting in. If we could get in, who else could get in? Mm -hmm. Makes you think if there were Russians or there were potential terrorist threats or anyone trying to manipulate him. We also got into, you know, got very close and obviously had a well-known scene now with Rudy Giuliani, who is the president's lawyer. And I think that had a big impact mm -hmm. in that the Rudy Giuliani, just before the final presidential debate, was intending to uh, reveal this hard drive that supposedly had secrets of the Biden crime family. That was going to be the October surprise of the Republicans. It was going to undermine the Biden campaign. Just as he's about to release that, there is an image circulating on the internet 
of Rudy with his hand down his underpants. Mm -hmm. And during that presidential debate, the movie gets released. And uh, he goes from being a fairly reliable witness to somebody who is completely absurd. I mean, mm -hmm. obviously that absurdity was added to by himself with the Four Seasons press conference and mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. hair dye incident. But, you know, he obviously was Trump's main weapon to undermine the Democrats at the time. And then later on to undermine the election result. Rudy was in charge of the legal campaign to undermine the election result. Mm -hmm. And I feel that our movie and Maria had helped characterize him as somebody who is not to be trusted, mm -hmm. as somebody who, you know, the image was a guy on his back in a bedroom with a young woman with his hand down his trousers. Yeah. Rather yeah. than a respected lawyer. <laughs> I mean, the, the image and the, the, the power behind that, its impact is everywhere. It, it, it all just kind of speaks for itself. But um, it also speaks to the fact that the political implications of this film aside, none of it would have worked without the performances to go behind it. So us speaking for Backstage today, we're really wanting to dive into the, the craft and the nuts and bolts of how those performances came together. Um, Maria, just uh, to turn to you, how is it that you kind of built this character? And I tell me a bit about the audition process as well. I understand that uh, there are several rounds of it. And one of the rounds you were actually interacting with real people the way that you would have uh, in the film. So talk to me about that process and uh, how you went about kind of finding what this character would look like. So the audition process, as a lot of people already know, for me at the beginning it was like is it possible is it possible somebody to give that kind of a huge platform for an eastern european to be big part of a big budget hollywood movie and to develop multi-layered characters to the because usually for eastern european actors there's going to be like two three lines here and there and we are almost all the time portrayed as villains like the bad guy or a hooker or a mob guy or a prostitute uh and i was like is it actually possible? And then after I sent an audition for like for a joke without even thinking that I'm gonna start traveling somewhere uh, for audition because I didn't believe that it's possible. Um, they called me um, uh, and I jumped on a plane with my mom crying at home that she would probably never gonna see me again because how is it possible? And because the project was so confidential, there was basically, we are not gonna give you the script. We cannot tell you what is the studio behind who's gonna star in this movie, where we're gonna shoot it, when we're gonna shoot it, nothing. Uh, and I was, sounds scary. <laughs> my mom was, this is a completely kidnapping situation. You're not doing it. And I was like, no mom, I have to do it. I have only one life and I'm gonna risk it. Uh, so I went there and I met Sasha and it was the best day in my life. Uh, and for me, to be honest, the more I'm thinking about uh, for the, that time, I was happy even with the meeting of him because it was such a great lesson because from the very first moment, he was like, you know, we're gonna do some crazy things and you have to be yourself, you have to be honest. And in my mind at, at the beginning was like, how to be my, what do you mean to be myself? You think that I, I'm that crazy girl, blah, 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 blah. but his, his teaching was basically to believe in these characters. The more I start getting to know Sasha and his, his acting training and how to somehow, of course, Tute is, is influenced by myself, is a created character by Sasha. And it should be as crazy as bored because it's his daughter. Mm -hmm. uh, and somehow should have some of my things that are personal, but of course, much more rough, much more crazy, much more not that educated, I don't know, because she hasn't been around uh, schools and things. So we started everything together completely, but I have to be honest and I have to say that I will always be grateful that Sasha gave me the opportunity to, to talk with him, to discuss and to collaborate with him by developing the character because he listened to myself and to me. Um, and it's starting from how to they should walk, like as example, because Bort has a special walk and he's working. I, I mean, I cannot uh, uh, portray it, but Tuta is walking like a bodybuilder. She's walk, walking like this. Uh, it's not a feminine thing. How she should smile. Is it going to be like a polite way or is it going to be like, like this? 
and probably from a little bit more, uh, from outside inside. And then uh, I start imagining about this life, how she should be living until this moment and what her dreams has been. And because of Sasha, I had the chance to, I don't know, to, to think about and to, to listen to him and to create it together. Yeah, yeah. And with, with I mean, just considering kind of the, the larger than life conceit of both of these characters, I imagine that that outside in process is kind of necessary. You're finding their walk, you're finding what their physicality is, you're finding what the voice is before even diving into the emotions of it. Um, but Sasha, can you tell me a bit about uh, specifically for the emotional arc of Borat in this? Did it feel different from versions of Borat that we've seen before? Yes. The, so the aim here was to create a much more emotional story than had ever been done before in one of our movies. And the challenge there is how do you do that in a movie that's with real people but two actors? Mm -hmm. Because the audience are aware that me and Maria are acting. You know, because they're aware that who's real and who the two actors are. Mm -hmm. So the challenge was how do we get the audience to engage with the emotional journey here? And for me, that was that we had to play the emotions completely in a very, very true way. That this was, you know, the story of the first ever Kazakh man who loved his daughter. Mm -hmm. and the first Kazakh daughter who ever stood up to her dad and became independent. And so those, there are only, you know, there are about 12 or so scenes where we're tracking those changes and those had to be very exact. So obviously there's improvisation, but there has to be very precise character developments that are conveyed to the audience of, Borat, you know, assumes that she's an object. He doesn't really know much about her, that she's a possession and her worth is just by belonging to someone else. But he's almost a um, closet daughter lover. You know, he's a closet <laughs> feminist. Mm -hmm. so we, I actually watched Brokeback Mountain to, to look at what is it like seeing a performance of somebody who doesn't really realize who they are. Huh, okay, interesting. Uh, you know, that's a man who doesn't realize he's in love with another man. Hmm. Deep down, Borat is a father who doesn't realize that he is in love with his daughter and respects her. So you need those subtle, you know, that has to, you know, that has to be a complete arc. And then he reverts later on in the movie to go, no, I'm reverting to the Kazakh patriarchal society where she will do what I say and I will take her and I will give her to Rudy Giuliani and enough of this nonsense. Mm -hmm. you know? So it is really for Borat, Borat in a way stops being Borat. He is, he has this fundamental challenge to his belief system where she goes, that book that you, live by it's nonsense mm -hmm. you, know, you know women can read women can drive everything that you've thought so borat has this complete real breakdown also when he meets the jewish holocaust survivors mm -hmm. his attitudes to jews so it's we wanted borat to go through this real emotional journey as well and then actually wanted the audience to believe that these two loved each other and you know you couldn't do that without an incredible actor and maria as modest as she is and as much as she says that i taught her stuff she's instinctively she'd just come out of drama school she'd done one movie fundamentally she's an incredibly powerful dramatic actor you know we had a scene which was just me and her and it was that breakup scene where she goes dad i don't believe the book is rubbish da, da, da. everything you've told me is a lie and in the scene i was like oh my god i'm gonna start crying uh, if I don't stop her and I go, all right, let's stop. Because I obviously, I'm English. I don't want to cry in front of uh, <laughs> Of course, of course. My fellow writers. And we were like, okay, she's got the role. Because she'd already, you know, the first stage is, can you be a good enough actor? 
where you can inhabit the character so much that no one can perceive that you're playing a character. Mm -hmm. So we've interviewed hundreds of really excellent actors, some of them hilarious, some of them extremely experienced dramatic actors. We put them in a room with real people and often within the first three or four minutes, the real person would say, you're an actor. Mm -hmm. I don't buy it because, you know, we're delivering jokes in that hour or two hours or in the case of, you know, I spent five days with in one scene. <laughs> That's a separate thing. You have to, the jokes have to come in in such a way that the person you're with does not perceive that you are delivering a joke. Mm -hmm. Yes, that means that the performance has to be completely consistent. And that means everything you're doing from the way you walk to how you, you know, sit down to how you eat to how you drink, you know, everything is planned out beforehand. I have to work out and Maria had to work out how do you drink from a cup? When do you go to, when you go to the toilet, how does Borat go to the toilet? You know, I would go and I would, you know, if there was pot pourri, do you call it that pot pourri to make the toilet smell nice? Oh, yeah. I'd throw that in the toilet and there would be toilet paper elsewhere. And you have to, the entire performance has to be completely consistent. Uh, I remember very early on when I first did Hugo with Martin Scorsese, my agent at the time, he's no longer my agent, said, it's so great to see you play a real character. And I was like, no, 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 no. Borat is a real character. Mm -hmm. He's no one who's with Borat thinks he's fake. He's a real character. It's just the scene is not three minutes long or like in a Martin Scorsese movie. Right. The hours long. And in this case, you know, I had one scene that was, uh, you know, almost five days long with the same people. So that has to be that you have to have thought about everything, as Maria was saying, which is how do they walk? How does that change? How do they wake up? How do they brush their teeth? Mm -hmm. How do they eat? You know, I was eating steak with these guys. How do I hold a knife and fork? How, how do I do everything? You know, yeah. how do I know my backstory well enough that any question that is asked of me or asked of Maria, we have an answer. And if you're not thinking of, oh, which village did you come from? Or what was it? How many people do you have in your family? You know, when I'm preparing for Chicago 7 or I'm preparing for this, it's the same, same process. Yeah. You try and learn everything you can about the character and then you play in the moment with the real person. And, and Maria, I mean, you, you were just out of uh, drama school. Obviously, you have professional credits under your belt prior to Borat as well. But I feel like some of these exercises are almost the acting exercises that you would learn in drama school, whether it be building the backstory or finding how they uh, hold a knife and fork. Like, ha have you, had you been faced previously with an acting challenge quite like this, or was this all new territory for you? Um, I have to say that my training in my uh, academy for theater and film arts was kind of, it might be kind of similar because the professor that has been training me has been, their training has been based on Carl Gustav Jung. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and it's been always about the thinking of the impossible in, in the logic of possible and, and somehow, so it might have been, I, I had to create a background of, of the things that I've been imagining. If you, if you develop a, a moment, a quick etude, if that's the word in English, you completely have to know the previous, the, the, the retrospection, the things before, uh, not retrospection, the exposition. I don't know how to translate it in English. You know, the things, what is happening before and what is going to happen mm -hmm. after that. So you have to imagine the things, but of course I've never been facing this in a movie world, in the cinema world, because of course it's, it's something familiar for all of us that there is a second take, there is a third take, there is a fifth take. And here with this, beautiful roller coaster we had only one shot to do it mm -hmm. and you, you because these are real people that they, they don't know what is they they can they won't repeat it again and you it's not that nice to repeat the same joke more than once <laughs> right not crazy you can't so, ask Rudy Giuliani to go back in the room and say can we do that again <laughs> <laughs> right that's, that's the challenge here that's why I you know Maria is a one-off somebody who's that funny yeah. that believable that courageous, um, 
you know, that emotional an actor and that professional that you've got one take and it's got to be perfect. Mm -hmm. You know, in the rally where Borat's on stage singing, she finds out that if she doesn't give herself to Rudy Giuliani and give up her career as a, you know, her new independence, her dad's going to die. So she has to register that all in one take. We've got one, you know, we've always got brilliant camera people who are making sure they capture that perfectly. But you've got to get it right. And so, yeah, the stakes to, you know, the stakes for this were a lot higher than anything that I've ever done before, a lot higher than the first Borat, because we felt we could only win if this was an emotionally engaging story where you cared about cared about these two people and you wanted them to end up together at the end. You know, they loved each other in different mm -hmm. ways, again, but you want them to be together. And so they end up as this journalistic team and it's very, it's very powerful, but you could not do it. I honestly do not believe that we could have made this movie with anyone other than Maria. I mean, it, is, it certainly seems that way. And just obviously the performance speaks for itself in that sense. Um, when it comes to this style of acting, uh, as you say, you only have one take, the stakes are high every time. What about that is appealing about uh, y y for you as an actor? I mean, it it's probably easier to be doing more traditional <laughs> routes of performance. So wh what about it is appealing to kind of dive into those waters and uh, to have those stakes as a performer? I mean, I wouldn't say it's appealing. There's times, you know, before the gun rally, you know, I had to put on a bulletproof vest because there was a chance, the security felt like there was a chance I could, someone could shoot at me. Um, so that, that's not appealing. You know, this style of acting is, you know, as we all know, it's terrifying to be an actor. You're scared yeah. before the scenes, you're scared for those of you who go on stage in the days where we did have stages. Um, but this style is even more terrifying. Um, and yeah, it's, you know, I did the Aaron Sorkin movie and some of the other actors were complaining that we'd often only have two or three takes. And I was saying, hold on, you've got three times as many as we had. <laughs> you know? So yeah, there, there's incredible pressure. There's jubilation really when you get the scene. Yeah if you can't quite believe you managed to do it, you know. Um, so there is that complete exhilaration. And we know as actors, you know, you know when you've nailed a scene. Here, when you've nailed it and everything has come together, um, you have a kind of double exhilaration and you, often you've run away from the scene, you know. Maria and I had to run away from the Rudy scene because he'd called the police and the police mm -hmm. ended up raiding the room and confiscating the equipment, completely illegal that they did actually. That is, uh, in, you know, you get some indication of uh, Mayor Giuliani's power in New York. But yeah, it's exhilarating. You're running, escaping, you run into the getaway car and you, you get out of there and you, leave the state because you know the police are coming around to your hotel rooms to try and arrest you mm -hmm. uh, even though they've got no reason to so there's some exhilaration there but this is make no mistake this is hard work this is you know intense learning of backstory this is you know no different to the aim of inhabiting a character that you have in any other work that i've done yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And M Maria, what about the process took you most by surprise? Um, you, you were warned from the first meeting of Sasha that you're going to do some wild and crazy things for this. Um, but what, what about it was most challenging and, and most surprising at the end of the day? Oh, um, I, have to, uh, I have to admit that the script was evolving every single day. I mean, there's always been more and more and more and more interesting things and deeper uh, ideas of, of these characters and how to make them if I don't know even more for the people to be empathizing empathizing them. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, so uh, from the very first time I knew that it's gonna be crazy and it's gonna be interesting and it's let's be honest it's so full of adrenaline so it's kind of I want to do more of this I want to do more of this I want to do more of this I remember when the first lockdown happened I was like oh, what I'm gonna do now who I'm gonna meet tomorrow nobody oh no <laughs> so 
it, it is amazing. And because to be honest, Sasha is genius. I, I, I definitely completely say that he is my favorite actor because I've seen all of his movies now, especially after the, the role, even the previous ones, the recent ones. And he's brilliant as a dramatic actor, as a comedian, as a creator of all of these incredible movies from Ali G to for a subsequent movie film and all of his work. So it's been always, I want this scene to keep going and keep going and keep going. So I was prepared that there's gonna be a scene with somebody important, Monica Levinson, the amazing producer that we were working with. She was like, Marie, you have to be prepared that you're gonna meet somebody that is gonna be a high level person. Mm -hmm. I will be able to do it. And I was like, oh yeah, sure, let's do it. Without even realizing that we're talking about politicians. And because I'm not American, and I'm not into American politics, so I probably didn't realize that it's so much impactful. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I trust these people because I spent almost two years with them and they, they were like my family. And maybe, of course, this has been the most, the most crazy scene because I, I was in this room with a lawyer, with the lawyer of the president, and I had to be more convincing because these people should be smartest people right <laughs> and they might catch me every single moment should be, should I'm be. Pretending something. so probably that scene has been the more i'm thinking about the more i realize that it's been the scariest scene or also the, the debutant ball because i remember that the night after the debutant ball i had no memories it was like a hypnosis we we went there we did all of this then then people get mad, crazy mad and after that when we left i was like what we did I don't remember it. And it was so, because your emotions are so high that you, you don't even realize at the moment when you're doing it. I don't know. It's, it's amazing. It's, I, it's, I'm obsessed. <laughs> I get it. I get it. And, and obviously you're, you're speaking passionately about it now. How do you follow up an experience like this? Um, what, what is it that you want to do next? Obviously it's kind of a weird time in the performing arts, but do you have anything on your bucket list? Oh, I don't know. I, I want to work on projects that are going to be impactful, that are going to be somehow like a document on the time that we're living in, and that are going to have a purpose on doing it. Because art is important for entertaining people, but at the same time, if you can make people act, not only react at something that they're looking at, it's, it's the highest form at, at art, I think. I don't know. Because art is important. You've been given this platform. Let's make the world a better place for you and me. And let's, let's be kind to each other. I don't know. Yeah. No, if, in, if we're learning anything during this time, I think that about sums it up. And uh, Sasha, I know that Borat, he, he came out of retirement for this film. Uh, do you envision revisiting him in the future? Or has uh, the, the 2020 presidency and election, that, that was the reason to resurrect him? That was the reason to resurrect him. Yeah. And as much as it was exhilarating to make this movie, you know, this was the most dangerous movie I've had to make. Um, you know, being after that lockdown rally, being chased and hiding in an ambulance, which was meant to be our getaway vehicle and surrounded by gun toting, um, protesters who were trying to pull me out of the ambulance and um, you know I came close to somebody pulled a gun and you know there were I was it was fantastic we, we managed to make this movie but I can't count on luck uh, all the time and uh, yes I'm extremely happy with how it turned out but no I won't be revisiting for <laughs> hopefully ever again. Fair enough, fair enough. And obviously something like the Chicago 7 is a magnificent performance. You looked a couple of years ago with The Spy, you're still finding new ways to challenge yourself as an actor. Um, so how, how do you hope to challenge yourself going forward? Anything on your bucket list? There's, there's nothing really, I mean, for me, taking on a role is so consuming that I try to do it as rarely as possible. And when there's no way for me to say no. So I've only really done a handful of other projects. Chicago 7, I had to play Abby Hoffman. I'd been obsessed with the character for mm -hmm. over 27 years. Um, when Martin Scorsese called for Hugo, I had to say yes, Les Miserables. I, that was my favorite musical. I, I had to do it. And with Tim Burton, I was 
a huge fan of his as and the same with Adam McKay. So those, those have been the only experiences I've had. And then I, I did a TV show called The Spy and I felt I knew about that story. My dad, my late father had told me about it. So it was, uh, it was something that I was compelled to do. If something comes along that compels me to perform, um, then I'm lucky enough that I can sort of hold off until that happens. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Um, well, to, to wrap things up here, um, again, just considering the backstage audience are the working actors of the world. And uh, Maria, you were featured on our Emerging Talent portfolio. Sasha, you have our cover coming out this week. So that's, that's old hat for you. But could you offer our readers your, your best bit of advice that you wish you knew when you were first getting your start? Um, Maria, we'll, we'll start with you. Hmm, my advice? I think I, I mostly stick to this advice from the beginning to not think about the result and to enjoy the process, probably. Even the auditions, enjoy them. Excellent, excellent. Sa Sasha, how about you? Um, I mean, I don't know what advice I could give other than to try and enjoy performing the scenes. Even if they are tragic scenes or you're crying or it's a troubling scene. Try and enjoy the fact that you are performing the scene and also try and use your emotions that you have prior to the scene for the scene rather than overcoming them. This was something that me and Maria would call me up prior to scenes and be in tears. I can't do it. I'm terrified. I'm like, that's great. Use that. Mm -hmm. Use that fear for this scene and use that adrenaline and energy that it's going to give you so rather than oh my god i feel scared i'm terrified woman try and know that that is going to be useful and it's going to make your scene even better but um yeah Sasha keeping all of his advices for me and i can <laughs> tell it to you because uh oh i'm joking to be honest I, again sasha you are a hero to the world forever and uh, yeah his advice is are the best advice and he's I'm, I'm sorry repeating it but yeah well listen you've seen how incredible she is so I hope she gets the recognition she deserves because there's no more brave performance and there's no other performance that I've seen that shows somebody inhabiting a character as fully as Maria does of this you know very simple peasant girl who goes through this complete transformation so she's got my vote a, a very simple simple peasant girl and then look at her today i mean yeah. <laughs> hollywood star right here yeah but uh i i, I have to agree I, I hope that the the best comes for both of you this award season um congrats again on the film and thanks for making the time to chat today thank you great to speak to you again my friend yeah yeah you as well and everyone out there stay safe and um Let's hope um, we all get vaccinated when the time comes. Okay. Yeah. Brighter future ahead, for sure. Yes, definitely. <laughs> all thank right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, everyone else on this call, anything to chime in on before we wrap up? Thanks. That I was thought, wonderful. I thought that was really great. I thought all three of you, thank you so much. It was great. All right. Sounds good. Well, thank you, everyone, for making it happen. Thank you, Marie and Sasha, for your time. Uh, we'll be in touch. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Ben. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Maria. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye.